Greetings and felicitations. Hip hip hoorah, tally ho. Hey, my little Georgia Peach. Hey, Puddy. All right, we watched episode two of Lower Decks, and we got a little bit more character development this time. Every episode, we're learning more and more about the characters. Yes, and I think this episode was a little bit better than the first one. All right, so just like we did with the last review, we spoke about the Lower Decks main engines on the Lower Decks, the four. Let's do a background of the senior officers, the main four senior officers that we see on this show before we get into our review. First up, let's talk about Captain Carol Freeman, voiced by Dawn Lewis. She's the captain of the Cerritos. And in, in the very beginning, they had that, um, you know, with, with the, the light, the ball of light that was an entity. And, and so right at the end of that, of that scene, the, the ball of light went into the captain. And, and then she was never seen again this episode. So I would like to know, and, and it'll probably pick up next episode, uh, what effect that had on her. We haven't seen a lot of the captain in this show. This almost mirrors Discovery. We're seeing other senior officers more so than we're seeing the captain in these first two episodes. So we know yeah. very little about her. So when it comes to these senior officers, we have minimum information on them. We just know that Captain Freeman heads a starship that overall is not very important. And she doesn't seem to, to mind. I mean, of course, she's, she's still going to do her job. I, I do like it where she said, I, I have to find another another way to say let's go to warp, you know. Oh, whatever. yeah, yeah, that was funny. You know, yeah, because mm -hmm. all, because the other captains did, you know, engage or mm -hmm. punch it. Yeah, she should have her own phrase. <laughs> that would be great. Now, the first officer of the Cerritos is Jack Ransom, voiced by Jerry O'Connell. Now, this one seems to be an obvious parallel to William Riker. At least that's yes. the feel that I get. How about you? Yeah, that's what I think, too. I seem to recall seeing him on the uh, in in the trailers, and you, you could kind of tell he was going to be the Riker character. And he does have a beard. Well, it's almost like red. it's almost like unshaven, though, kind of like Fred Flintstone. Yeah, is it more of a, like a shadow type of five yes. o'clock shadow type of beard? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So far, he seems to to be a go getter. Right, and also um, one of the. Like like the good old boys. I mean, one of the guys who, who loves to have fun, but you know he's also going to do his job well. Next up, Shax, voiced by Fred Tadascore. This is a Bajoran lieutenant that's head of security. At first, I didn't realize that he was Bajoran. Yeah, with the cartoon, it's a lot harder to tell. I mean... The I, I ridges think, are yeah. so subtle. Right, right. Until, unless I'm looking for them. But then I noticed the earring, so it all came together. So I'm thinking along the lines of ends in row. Yeah, he, he's kind of... Well, I mean, he, he looks like an older guy. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I guess he's as far up as he's going to go in Starfleet. He must be one of those who just doesn't want to retire. He just wants to stay there and keep working. I mean, it looks like he, he loves security and... And, and so they showed him here because Rutherford went to his department for a while. So it does seem like Shax is a good commanding officer. I mm -hmm. mean, he, you know, he didn't mind. I mean, I mean, he loved recruiting Rutherford when he saw he was such a good fighter. But then also he didn't mind letting him go. He was like, sure, you can go. And last but not least is to Anna, voiced by Gillian Vigman. This is the Cation doctor that's medical department. We did a side-by-side -side comparison of Lieutenant Mares, the Cation, in the original animated series, and this Cation, and they look drastically different. Yes, it's hard to believe they're from the same race, but you could say it's just another... You know, I guess like a species of within, cat, right? A subspecies within, within the, that race. Yeah, the side-by-side -side comparisons, uh, I, I wasn't sure, uh, but they did announce that that she is Cation. We didn't really see much of her. I mean, like, as far as her character, you still don't know much about her. Um, she She's probably a competent doctor. That's about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Time will tell. I do like how she wears the medical jacket. Harkens back to... Crusher. Absolutely. Yes. So we see the ties there, and it separates her from the others in the medical department. 
Now in that part of the core four, we do have the chief engineer, Andy Billups, voiced by Paul Shear. So I think it's great that we're seeing the characters have someone to report to. Rutherford's going to report to him, and they seem to have a good relationship. Yeah, Billups was the one that I wasn't, like, the last episode I wasn't sure who he was in the first episode, I mean. But this one, yeah, this one, now we know. Okay, he's the chief engineer. So maybe we'll see him more. But but he also seems very competent, and yeah, and he, and he likes Rutherford. It, it's great that everybody liked Rutherford. <laughs> so let's talk about the episode. Entitled... On Boys... It starts out by this luminous ball floating around the ship. I mean, I mean, that scene I actually liked. Well, what I what I didn't really like was that we already we already saw it on the previous week because they showed it in re- on the ready room with Will Wheaton. That's right. So it was like I already knew what was going to happen. But anyway, but I but I did like that scene. Um, I mean, this was mocking Star Trek because because like they've had so many episodes with that little ball of light that was an entity, and it was always threatening. And so now we see someone actually um, n- not see the ball of light as a threat, someone who actually goes after it. I mean, it's funny because it's like, well, hey, wh- how come, um, you know, Picard and Kirk never thought of that? I mean, it, Especially for personal gain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, yeah, but I thought that was, that was a funny scene. It was. And what I liked about this episode, we're getting to understand the character of San Rutherford more. And that's the type of thing when you're young, even though you're choosing a career path, you still have it in your mind. Well, what if I want to do something else? What if I'm better at something else? And I I appreciate his journey in this episode. Yes. Um, I mean, I was surprised that he even thought about changing because you knew – that that he was passionate about engineering, but then he, it's, it just it just came to him that he like didn't have much free time. But you know he was spending all the time with engineering duties because that's what he liked. But he had to find that out for himself. So yeah, so he goes and tries other things. And, and I do like how all the other officers, um, you know, they didn't berate him for wanting to to change. And and I think that's something we've seen on Star Trek. They don't emphasize it as much, but people do change jobs on on you know on ships on the enterprise they they've changed duties before well i was thinking how much this parallels to the next generation do you remember jordy was on the bridge and then went to engineering and then wharf was security or tashiar was security but then wharf became involved in security so there are changes in departments and of course lieutenant j she's worn all colors <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they so it's okay for them to um to go to other departments and and they are cross trained anyway. They're supposed to be cross trained yes. a little to to help with each other's jobs because, I mean, on a starship, you never know when someone is going to suddenly die from from a big accident or something. Mm-hmm. So we do see that happen. And look at the original series. Sulu originally wore blue. He was an astrophysicist. And That's right. What they said in the in where no man has gone before, and then later he became the helmsman. Yes. So I, I love the idea that it shows young people are, are still trying to figure out what they want to do because that parallels real life in so many ways. So I think that this storyline hit the nail on the head, and I liked seeing different departments through his eyes. Yeah, so it, yeah, that was a, a good storyline. Now, that was the B story, so you want to go on to the A story? Go ahead. I mean, the... On boys, I mean, where the where the episode got the name was about Boimler and Mariner taking a Klingon to. So they wind up on another planet. Well, actually, they wind up on Kronos or a um, Klingon. Was it a Klingon outpost? Yeah, they or were was it they were escorting a Klingon. Um, I like the B story better than I like the A story. I mean, it did look like Kronos. Let me say that. So it probably was. And I think that oh, and and they made the the when they were walking around the planet. Very reminiscent of Discovery when they were walking around on Kronos, going mm-hmm. by the little the the vendors on the street, yes, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Shops, more people in their day to day lives. But but what I liked about this was um, that the way Boimler was that he was all he always wanted to be prepared and probably over prepared. That that that's a lot like the way I am, and and the fact of like being prepared and then finding out that. 
that you, you might not be as prepared as you thought. And then and then also finding out that someone else who doesn't prepare is still able to cope better than you are. I mean, that mm-hmm. that one I, I know about. Okay. So I saw those things in it. And um, Mariner, already knowing the Klingon, and, and we, we both made the association. Well, she's kind of like Dax, like being pals with the Klingon. It's very much reminiscent of Dax, like too much so, I think. It, it could be. Um, she knows everybody. She knows the songs. She drinks. Um, I'm I'm just not getting her character so much. It's just there, there's something that's just too over the top for me. You do have to wonder how how does she know so much? And she's supposed to be the same age as all of them. They they said that they, in the episode, right. right? But I mean, but no, I didn't think I thought Based she was older. Based on all these experiences, you think she's older, especially how many times she's been demoted. She said numerous times, so. Uh, th- that this, there's just a bit of disconnect with that character for me. But maybe they'll explain it later. Maybe, yeah, you're and right. Maybe Boimler doesn't know how old she is. I mean, maybe that was his mistake. Mm-hmm. So, um, so we'll find out. Now, what about um, the Vendorian? Oh, I love seeing the... that. That was the highlight of the episode for me when yeah. it came to <laughs> Easter eggs. Referencing back to the original animated series. So they had that, that shapeshifter from the episode Survivor from the, the original animated series. Oh, and now we have to call it the original animated series instead of just the animated. <laughs> I mean, I was reading a review where they called it that. They, you know, like they have to call it that now. <laughs> so um, Because the animated yeah. series isn't called the animated series. It's just called Star Trek. So they had to yeah. call it the animated series. T-A- it was called TAS, the <laughs> animated series. <laughs> but yeah, have, having that, and yeah, and that makes me wonder too. So, how much is is this cartoon going to harken back to the original cartoon Star Trek? And and it would be neat to have more references to it. Oh, I would love it. They, yeah, they, sure. I mean, the Cation. Yeah, having the a Cation. Oh, I'd love a Cation episode. Oh yeah, it would be great. And having like seeing their whole race, maybe their home planet. Mm-hmm. And um, as we talked about before, these are things they could do with animation that that would be a lot harder. You know, that it would go too much into the budget to do to do it uh, as a live action show. But what did you think about the theme of this A story? That being that, oh well, Mariner does know everything, and she just has to back off a little bit just to make Boiler feel good about himself. Well, what was good was was that that she recognized what she needed to do to make him feel better, and yeah, they you know I I do think that it should have written a different it should have been written where where he actually did come through on his own and didn't have to be helped by her. So so yeah, that that's a little bit of a, a shaky deal there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I thought so. She gave him the confidence. Yeah, yeah. So it almost seems like it's more about her. It's more about her knowing what to do, and and her doing that for him still shows that that she's still a little a little too um, over the top. She she's a little too good at at what she knows. She's just, I mean, how how is she that good at, at working with people and and at knowing all of these things about the different cultures? She knew that he shouldn't uh, kiss the girl and all of those things. Mm-hmm. But I did like seeing so many things in the background. I think that's one of my favorite aspects of the show are the little Easter eggs. Whether it be references to past episodes or past species or just the people in the back. There's such variety and there's a lot of imagination there. And graphically, it's absolutely beautiful. It is. It's a pretty show to look at. Mm Mm-hmm. And and they throw all of the like the aliens in the background. Is that what she meant? I love like, it. I yeah, absolutely yeah. love it. The whole time we're we're not only paying attention, but we're looking at the edges of the screen as well. So I think they're hitting it out of the park in the, in those areas. So the show still has potential. Totally. Thanks for listening. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join our Facebook group. Live long, and may the force be with you. Nanu, nanu.